what's up everybody half dead musings number 10 we're in the double digits now we're a bunch of tweens whatever i think that's the tween age 10 to 12 as we were discussing right before this uh <laughs> so for any new people i'm brian i run the dead man dreams channel if you're watching from the titan channel i'm also zisu 007 which is my gamer old gamer name and uh so and this is marco he runs or you could talk Thank you. Uh, yeah, Musings by Marco channel on YouTube, and uh, same thing on Twitter, and that's all you need to know. Yep, yep. So we got a bunch of really cool stuff, uh, but real quick, I'll do a little update. I am now officially an LLC owner since the last time uh, we did a podcast. I started Troll Squad Media, LLC, a comedy startup based out of Chicago, and I've been networking with a lot of people, and we've been i'm really lucky right now we got a really solid crew of uh, very solid actors uh looks like we are, we do have one guy from second city uh where bill murray went if you're not familiar with uh, in chicago we got uh just a lot of really talented actors i wrote this crazy plot and uh most people seem to enjoy it but some people you know comedy is it's hit or miss like sometimes i watch stuff on tv it's like i don't even laugh like bob's burgers or something like I never got that one either. It's like, it's like 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 on the reviews, and I'm like, I just want to shoot myself when I'm watching this crap. It's a little slow. I didn't, I didn't give it like a real chance, but like from a couple of minutes I looked at it, it just kind of seemed slow, and I don't know. I don't know it's supposed to be smart comedy, but it didn't seem smart to me. But yeah, I, I yeah. did not like it one bit. It was just miserable. <laughs> so my, this comedy, what we're doing is more like uh, South Park ruthlessness, but we're doing it with real actors and really there's not that much that would compare to it i can't think of a show that would be like that um but when i look at like all these other shows that did well I, my example that i'm always telling people is it's always sunny in philadelphia they started they before episode one season one they were in this dark room with horrible lighting and horrible audio and that was not even funny to me but yet they blossomed into some really great stuff and we're going to be miles ahead of where they started and so i have faith that's why i've been investing the money and to all you guys out there who are a part of the team now a part of the crew i look forward to working with you guys we're gonna have a lot of fun and hopefully write the next generation of comedy based out of chicago the next generation or however you want to put it so uh all right and i was going to say i was thinking about making an llc just uh because government has given out so much stimulus to, to businesses it's ridiculous <laughs> i know someone uh one of jerry's friends he owns uh three companies mm -hmm. and the amount of money he's gotten from the three companies which are all pretty small um basically he can he's you know Jeez. retired at this point with the amount of money he's stacked up Just he made he kind of had a horseshoe up his ass because he's done a couple good moves like he was all leveraged up in houses when uh during the 2008 but he didn't have much money down in houses so he was able to walk away from the houses underwater where other people did the right thing and had more equity in their homes they didn't want to walk away because they had too much money in them no. but he had the minimum down so he uh you know he, for underwater house just walked away bankruptcy you come back in seven years and you're uh, you're good to go uh, <laughs> unlike student loans there was a scammer back when I was like in my early 20s and they had this scam because there was all these people who got stuck with garbage properties in the ghetto during the housing collapse, I believe it was, or maybe it was just a bad time in real estate. And uh, the whole scheme was if your credit was good enough, you buy this house, they give you like, I think it was like $10,000 up front and then you crash your credit and you just... <laughs> <laughs> take the take oh, the losses. So you can walk away from it, and well, it's under someone else's name. That's yeah, uh, original, yeah. So they could walk away from it. The the people who cre credit matters, and then the people. But the it, the numbers didn't make sense. I didn't do it. I mean, if you think about, I don't the numbers, think you can keep that money anyways. No, the reason why. It, bankruptcy then uh, you don't get to hold on to this 10 grand you've suddenly got no you don't go bankrupt immediately like instantly like you have to in order to not raise red flags they said you had to make your payments on time i believe it was for a year i think it might have been 
and so that eats into your money and so by the time you're all said and done what do you get left like a two thousand dollars and a crash credit it's like the numbers didn't even make any sense like and so i didn't want to do it i don't know anybody who did it but <laughs> I the math, so i guess that's what they're banking on yeah but on a brighter note today was really awesome uh remember in my first video that i put out i started with the hubble space telescopes deepest ever image uh, of in the universe oh, i forgot to shut that off real quick the deepest ever image in the uh, whole universe now they put out a brand new one using infrared with the web space telescope and this is even deeper than that and so it's really awesome to watch in this I one little... was coming out tomorrow uh well they did this one but then they're going to have the press release tomorrow and release a whole range of more tomorrow is the, the big release day but they i guess they released this one to hype it up and... i thought uh okay because i know they did a tracking picture from a separate lower powered telescope on the satellite that it uses to target an area. Yeah, and, that's uh, basically what they did. That one. Is yeah. that what it, you're talking about? Well, what they did is they, they had to, they had to change the settings a bunch of times. And so they were able to get different parts clear at different times and they just kept the camera stationary. And then they made a composite where they uh, put everything together from the different settings. Yeah. And so it's, yeah. it's just the yeah. limitations of the all, every, all of them work yeah and so uh oh yeah about what was i gonna say oh if say if you were holding up a grain of sand in front of your uh hand as you were looking into the sky the range of in that photo is you got thousands and thousands of galaxies and if you were holding a grain of sand that's how big the area of the sky is with, with what they're looking at i mean just imagine how vast that is thousands of galaxies we're so my perspective yeah, thousands of galaxies contained in the space that a grain of sand does in our field of view, like 180 degrees or so. Yeah, and so if you think about it, like in every direction, no matter which direction you point to, even through the floor underneath us, like past Australia or China, you know, just thousands and thousands in those directions. So, I mean, it's just mind-boggling. Yeah. And yet we have no evidence of any intelligent life uh in our galaxy um and uh when this so that's a little strange but yeah. uh so that either tells you it's uh most civilizations wipe themselves out and you know and we're like uh you know the universe started 15 billion years ago so we've had 15 billion years and you know we came about recently or only uh you know, what are we, a hundred million years at the most? Oh, yeah, we're or, like a speck in time. I mean, life on the, on the planet, like Earth, like yeah. it was a hundred million years. So it's like, it was like 60% plus uh, through the universe before the Earth, even our planet came around and you have uh, any life formed on it. You know, what's crazy so, about our planet, 99.9% .9 of all species to have ever existed are extinct as well that's a mind-boggling one and also there's darwinism at play there along with mass extinction events yeah and uh like deepak chopra always points out just to show how related we all are i think we share like 70 something percent of our dna with a banana <laughs> a banana that's i mean everything is so similar here on earth and speaking of that uh francis crick the guy who cracked the code on dna with this other guy i had that in my first video i just recently learned he was micro dosing lsd at the time and the the vision of this double helix appeared to him in lsd uh, insights and lsd <laughs> and he's he was threatening to sue any media organization who printed that because it was, it was going to jeopardize his career and uh also his version of panspermia which is you know like what i said in the first video like space uh, dust or whatever it's floating around and it's carrying uh, dna his specific version of panspermia is even more wild he thought that it was an advanced civilization that knew that their time was coming to an end and it could have been like a supernova or whatever and they decided to launch their dna out because basically the superman <laughs> theory yeah, because it, it's so, uh, our DNA is so much more complex, like the combinations, whatever, I'm no expert on it, but he, he was just saying it it's was so complex, much, yeah, it was so much yet more. Yeah, all, all 
the all the ingredients uh, we've been we've seen naturally formed at this point like all the amino acids that are necessary we've seen um in the wild you know yeah not created anything else at this point and uh and we've seen it in comets as well and as we know comets are move really quick and they can get between vast distances so they can carry amino acids uh throughout you know to multiple planets um you're jumping around a little bit there starting with uh because you um with crick uh, i saw something uh interesting recently I, I made a note of it i got a bookmark i think somewhere but uh there's this good book that's all about like um conversations and uh correlation like um him and other researchers of the time talking with each other and just kind of theorizing and trying to figure out, um, you know, how DNA works and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to take a look at just because it, it, um, it gives you uh, an insight into biology of, uh, how, um, they were figuring it out at the time without the tools to prove, uh, what they, um, you know, the observations they needed to yet, um but uh it was actually uh it was from this tweet because i follow um the head of uh, ai at tesla this uh, karpathy guy mm -hmm. and um, he retweeted an article that was basically a blog post about biology and why um this guy didn't find it interesting in school but uh later on he did and it's because of the way that it's taught and there's a focus on um you know the mechanics and like what and memorization but yet there's not enough focus on the why and why you should care about why certain things are and the excitement yeah. yep. that uh should be into like the fact that you know we we all come from one cell and it's possible that one cell is able to differentiate is able to specialize itself and start dividing and turn into us I mean, it's amazing. It's like, yeah. like I was writing, like, how come people aren't just like right, walking around the streets and like grabbing people and shaking them and be like, <laughs> we're all from one fucking cell. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> you, well, how the fuck does that? Do, why aren't you excited about that? Yeah, I agree. It was like people. It is. It's crazy. And, I, and it's not taught. Like, it should be taught like that. And it's also good to teach where like if you go into a topic, um, you should explain like as a means to how to do something so yeah. that you could because if you're looking for something and it teaches you how to do the thing that you already want to do you know yeah. you gotta have a little incentive to do so like where you want, want to do something already but then you actually learn it and that's interesting because it's like helping you do something and you're like oh this could be used for to actually do this mm -hmm. and it's not just to memorize it for your stupid fucking test or <laughs> you know whatever it's like a memorize it for this stupid you know gold star or greater or whatever so i read that article i responded something like to that effect uh and uh that he liked my tweet so i was like oh that's cool Elon Musk actually I seen a video clip where he, he that's how he teaches his kids. He had the example of uh, doing all something on a car, of them. doing some <laughs> yeah with all these like secretaries and all these hidden children that are sprouting up from the weeds now. <laughs> they might have had sex, but from what I heard, this newest one, uh, she's uh, like the CEO of Neuralink, or she's an uh, executive at Neuralink now, mm -hmm. is that she did IVF was in vitro fertilization, which means that he. You know, it wasn't a natural pregnancy. He, <laughs> he gave his he gave his sperm, and she fertilized her eggs with it. He would he maybe do? they didn't even have sex. Maybe she was just like, I want to have his DNA because he's such a genius. I want his babies. <laughs> I don't even necessarily want to have sex, and it'd be too messy. So I'll just have his DNA and I'll have his babies. I like, know how he know. did it though. He, he uh, put it nightmare. inside of a Tesla bot, and then the Tesla bot banged her, and then that's how it <laughs> happened. <laughs> That would be extra steps. If they had a Tesla bot that can already do that, then we're going to be rich as Tesla shareholders. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he, did promise, he did promise cat girls to cat girl bots yeah. to the Twitter a long time ago. He's like, we're all the cat girls. Like, you know, I'll make it happen for you guys. <laughs> so sex robots confirmed. <laughs> Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. It was some, oh, about the DNA. Well, um, they're, so they're saying there's, it varies on what the percentage is, but they're saying that we have all this junk DNA, and it, like it could be as high as ninety seven. Junk now, but maybe they just don't understand exactly what exactly. it does. There's so That's many. There's there's so it's so messy biology. It's like uh, it's one of the hardest things to really uh, uh, understand because it's so 
messy and varies and we don't know it's so hard to get data on it but another part of this article was like how you get data is like everyone uses the same methods so if you study the methods that the experts use you it's a little easier to understand like where it's at which is like a lot of it's just like they take like masses and they like filter out the amounts of like certain things and that helps you uh, with the process yeah but there's methylation have you heard about methylation no that's like uh we understand what that was for a long time in college uh uh that was in one of my biology courses where um uh, it's like this uh layer uh they call it methylation because it's like a methyl um hmm. uh chemical groups are bonded like uh i forget if it's on top of dna or rna or what is but it's uh, it's a bunch of x it's like an extra layer that like determines maybe to some extent it was like if whether a gene gets expressed or not because you could have you have all these genes but they're not all being expressed at the same time so something has to be on your dna strand and your dna has to be unraveled at that spot or the machinery that reads it and sends out the messenger rna to the proteins to make the thing that the dna is the instructions for doesn't have access to do that so it has to be unwound and then the machinery has to be stuck to the dna at that mm -hmm. point and uh, if it's not then you could have all kinds of things in your dna and it's not being expressed so there's a lot to that because you know if uh let's say there's a part of your dna that has a mistake and it would make a protein that would kill you then if you would never express it then that's fine so if you had a way to block that part from ever being unwound even without maybe making a, a substitution or a change that's the that's another alternative form of, of a treatment listen to this bruce lipton wrote a book he's a uh i forget what his exact specialty was but he, his book i believe was called oh was it molecules of you uh, synthesis <laughs> no it was molecules of emotion <laughs> because uh anyways i guess he, he was showing that uh the dna doesn't activate itself you need an external stimulus in order to do that and so what he was uh pointing out in that book is uh in Maybe. the african american community they're dominating in uh, the nba and the nfl and you got all like super athletes and a lot of them are african americans and uh he was saying that there was two theories out there the one was that uh, due to slavery, slavery yeah they were forcing them to to mate with the Walk biggest and, yeah, and the strongest but uh, he pointed out that it was actually more likely living in dangerous situations and bad neighborhoods and stuff and then that stimulated your uh your r the rna dna cycle uh basically is how he described it where that way you feel the danger and the need to become big and strong in order to survive and it was more of a survival need and that's what he was proposing and it, he didn't think it was due to slavery so that's interesting a, but yeah. uh but you can't have genetic change on a in, re, in response to, to stimulus but maybe it could have a little effect on the amount of expression of certain genes but that's not actually evolution um so it wouldn't affect it in like a population overall but if you had a population where like if uh scandinavians or europeans maybe had uh were more specialized for longer periods of time because they had uh, figured out mechanical inventions to do away with the heavy labor work for like agriculture but african nations had agri agriculture much later yeah so they were still instead of selective breeding through slavery you could have had a natural selective process because the, you had to be strong to survive naturally whereas uh, some other like european civilizations strength wasn't a factor uh, uh you know hundreds of years sooner than them because you had the the water wheel and um the mm -hmm. the uh the windmill and the grinding stone and you know then steam power and sails and okay, steam engines and diesel and coal and oil and nuclear and, you know yeah yep. Oh, I was what I was gonna say about the junk DNA though is uh, about the possibility. See, there's two things what happens with psychedelic drugs, and why is it that cultures and people from all over the world uh, they experience the same things 
even though they have completely different cultures and a lot of people who don't even speak the same languages they see the same visions and the same archetypal things like like for ayahuasca the people see the mother ayahuasca they call her this giant snake that uh, is in the visions and she's like this grand teacher and she's able to reset your consciousness they say where people who are complete drug addicts they're able to go there and they immediately see like they were abusing the drug like graham hancock he's one of my favorite authors the guy who goes uh, over all the uh, ancient pyramid stuff and alternative history about the possibility of uh, lost civilization happening he was abusing marijuana i think he said for like 30 years and then he was getting even paranoid about it is it like his wife and it was just irrational paranoia once he went ahead of the ayahuasca she whooped the crap out of him is what he said and, and well, paraphrasing a little bit, but he immediately quit marijuana for many, many years, and uh, I mean that's pretty amazing stuff. But uh, I think oh, any strong dose of psychedelics basically is a perspective um, resetter, because uh, you are suddenly um, separate from your previous self in a way. Mm -hmm. Kind of, it's like a reset. It's like a for a certain limited amount of time you're a little freed from your separate from your preconceptions so you can more look like a uh, instead of being all wrapped up in your analysis of yourself you can look at yourself as like a third uninterested bystander party and analyze yourself and then you can come to some different conclusions well like uh, you're abusing a drug and then you can decide well i should stop this okay yeah, it, it's beyond the insights, though. It's also about visuals, like when the high DMT is uh, is the strongest one, and these same people or the same visions are happening to this like people all from all over the world. Like uh, they have like these weird like bouncing basketball things that people see that they're like awake and conscious and interacting with you and. Uh, it's be how your um, like um, neurons in your uh, eye fire in response to certain chemicals, and if you we can everyone's close though. Thing. Yeah. If everyone's getting the same chemicals, you can have the same neurons firing off and giving you similar signals. Just like if uh, you get uh, punched in the head really hard and you see stars, everyone kind of sees stars. That's because all your neurons in your eyes fire at once. Well, that's a shared experience, and you just need to be punched really hard. Well, Graham Hancock was talking about the junk DNA. That's, how, that's where I was getting at with the junk DNA. Maybe, see, there's two possibilities uh, uh, that the evidence seems to point to. It could be that the junk DNA actually has encoded this stuff, and we haven't understood how, exactly how it works yet. Considering DMT happens, uh, your brain releases it when you're nearing death. It's like this transitionary chemical that gets released into your uh, your body and into your brain. And so it's like you're meant to have this experience and perhaps DMT is working with this junk DNA or there's a chance that maybe there is some real interdimensional uh, entities, I guess you could say, uh, it, like interdimensionally interacting with you and that you're only able to interact with them under the influence of the drug. Like uh, Huxley talked about all this. Yeah, maybe monkeys will start flying out of my asshole. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, Aldous Huxley wrote The Doors of Perception, and that's where The Doors, the band, took their name from. And he, it was all about his peyote experience. I read that book, and uh, he calls regular human consciousness, I hope I'm not butchering it, but regular human consciousness is like a reducing valve, where you're reducing all the possible frequencies that you're able to perceive into a regular human experience, which is better for survival uh, needs in the immediate uh, time and uh maybe taking mescaline or dmt or psilocybin mushrooms or whatever it actually opens up that valve and allows the full uh, amount of experience to come at you like think about uh or maybe it's so just drug users who are just uh over emphasizing drugs <laughs> or looking for excuses for why drugs are great well psilocybin brain studies have shown that your brain is making new and neural pathway tons connections. Of, there, are, there are tons of benefits. To, well, no, you know, I, I'm saying that it, it right. norm, it, parts of the brain that don't interact with each other are interacting with yeah. each other yeah. in massive amounts when on uh, psilocybin. And so there is a mystery here. We don't see there's this stigma in mainstream science that where for years and years and years they refuse to study it so it's still a big mystery here and we have to go based on the testimonies of shamans and terence mckenna and 
you know, these psychedelic explorers to figure out what's going on. Even Joe Rogan these days. So, yeah, what are you looking at? Anything interesting? Uh, no, I was just uh, enjoying how my new monitors are set up because <laughs> um, I got these cool uh, gas spring uh, mo uh, monitor stands because... Um, like hydraulics? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, sort of, but it's just air, just kind of like uh, air suspension, but mm. uh, or just a spring. Hopefully they hold up. I got my middle one is like near the max weight, so this spring is good. But actually, the tilting function it's supposed to be adjustable, but from as far as I can tell, it's just a bolt that spins loosely, yeah. and uh, it's <laughs> maybe it's just the Chinese thing. I want to follow up on the review. I just want to know. If it's a real, because I, I, you know, is it a thing you could actually adjust or is it bullshit? I mean, if it's bullshit, <laughs> fine. It's still a good product for the price, but I want to know if it's a real thing or is it because it's the same between all three that I got. Interesting. So, uh, well, oh. this is nice because I converted to a standing desk. And, uh, cool. you know, this you can, is a. Uh, you can the alternate, tilt, right? The, the level is a lot better. Yeah, I can. Uh, I don't sit that much, anyways, because of uh, uh, back issues, but. Mm, uh, both of us know that. But I could. Yeah, I found some uh, interesting uh, stretches uh, recently. Um, well, one actually has been uh, a couple of things have been helpful lately. One is a lot of hanging from like a pull up bar, just mm -hmm. like uh, longer periods of hanging. If you get that decompression going is uh, along with uh, then like leg raises and stuff. And it helps your shoulders out as well. Um, to me. So it's like a triple double benefit, like working out and that back and shoulders and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, if you do uh, pelvis raises, you lay down flat on the ground and you bring up your knees bent, your oh. legs bent, come down the floor and just raise up your pelvis. That's pretty good too. I love it. I love uh, it. Some muscles. And I saw this thing on YouTube today. It was a chiropractor. So, you know. That already, I'm like, eh, maybe we'll see. <laughs> Our practors are kind of a BS science, but it doesn't mean they they have some have good uh, knowledge. So he was doing a stretch where you sit in like a door frame and you're uh, face it sideways and you kind of grab like this, uh, like right below your chin, and uh, you have your feet uh, touching the the like you're in a door frame facing the side of it, mm. and then you kind of just lean back with your butt a little bit and you can feel a stretch for sure like in your mm. upper and lower back then do that and then come back and and lean back a few times afterwards um that's uh that's another little uh, yeah i just been doing the hindu push-ups that's why I, my upper body's a lot bigger now than it was uh, last year i think i've been coming up on a year of doing it so that's, what's a hindu push-up uh it's hard to describe but basically you're you in the regular yeah, you, How do you, put your hands? you could put it like the same as like a regular push up, pretty much. But the the thing is, you imagine you're in a regular push up position, but you put your butt really high up into the air, so you're kind of arched, and then you go into the push up as you got that extra weight of your back being up in the air, and then when you then you go to like the normal uh, posi uh, push up position in a sense, then you push yourself backwards where your spine goes the opposite direction for that real nice stretch on your spine. Hello. So I do these things every day. It's awesome. So you start with an arched back, and then you end, uh, and then you come down with a flat back at the bottom of your uh, of the uh, yeah. But before then you, push. you do and the then snake. you go back into a arched, right? You go no, no. You do the opposite way of the arch. You, you're like the butt in the air is the first arch, and then once yeah. you go into regular, then you push down on the floor with your hands, and then like you like doing the the opposite so it's like you're bending your man i'm about to yeah. knock over my microphone <laughs> uh, oh by the way I, I wanted to say this before i forgot i had it written down uh in boston university uh this guy named dr eugene stanley in the 1990s led a study and he found that junk dna has the same structure as all human languages so there's this like encoded language like structure that's in there. So it's a real deep mystery, and that's why I love looking at this kind of stuff because it's like where the the limits of our knowledge are and where are we going. Yeah, that's yeah, some kind of mathematical mm -hmm. proof that you have to understand mathematics to make that kind of claim. Yeah, I don't understand fully. <laughs> I'm not even sure that there is a uh, between spoken languages if there's a uh, something that common it's almost like music i would imagine because you have to have certain things that well, now we're making things up but sure 
Well, no, like people have languages because they're convenient for the way your the limitations of your mouth and your vocal cords are. It's not like you're making up like stuff like like <laughs> making up like some crazy like spasm of a vocal cord vibration. Like people do what's convenient, and some people say that the Arabic languages are very beautiful and uh, sounding. And you know, it's all up for debate on who's got the coolest sounding language, but. Yeah, it's all about what you use it for, in my opinion. They haven't used it for the best shit. <laughs> they used to be big on the science before the whole, like, religious... Before religion. Over. Yeah, like, a lot of the stars in the sky, the Arab world was... It's a religion. Yeah, they were They're leading. Like, what? You're learning? You're learning things? You're understanding things? Oh, mm -hmm. next you're going to question God. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. I forget what... The I don't remember what the turning point was like what exactly happened where the science open-minded people got overthrown I, I don't even know the history like too well into that i've only heard it once or twice basically that it's just they used to be uh you know the top mathematicians they invented uh was it uh, i don't know if they did calculus that's pretty advanced but they did some maybe arithmetic or something yeah, and big, uh, big on that so they were, you know, they were leaders for a while, but then uh, basically the whatever their religious leaders called the Shah or whatever he is, was like, yeah. uh, nope, this is evil. This is against God. And they killed all the scholars and uh, burned all the books. And uh, hmm. now that's uh, now they're way behind and they're shitheads. You know, Iran in the 1970s, you could pull these uh, uh, images up. You had girls in short skirts, and it looked like the United States, like a college campuses in like the 1970s. And then the yeah. fanatics took over and repressed everybody. Well, actually, uh, well, the U.S. had a hand in that. We uh, supported those fanatics because uh, the free democracy Iran was not as friendly to giving us their oil. But the uh, crazy fanatics uh, were willing to sell us oil uh, if we helped them overthrow the uh, the shorts wearing smiling people. So <laughs> yeah, they got replaced money. with the wearing repressed people, but we got the oil. Yeah, that was in a book. I, if, if I'm remembering right, the guy who was involved, was. a relative of Roosevelt named Kermit, like Kermit the Frog, Roosevelt, Kermit Roosevelt. And he, <laughs> yeah. So being, uh, the coolest teacher I ever had in uh, college was this guy who made us read this book called uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And this guy basically was involved w in going overseas and promising like third world nations that, oh, yeah, we'll help you out with your garbage disposal, your water uh, utilities, you know, all this stuff, electricity. And they would inflate the numbers that they were going to be able to make based off of this investment by like way more like so these people say okay to these loans thinking Everything that, works in powerpoint well so anyways years go by they get screwed over they're in debt oh you can't pay now okay well you owe us now you're gonna do votes in the un for us you're gonna do this for us you're gonna do whatever and uh that's how a lot of american influence happened over the years and this was a college professor for a class i had to actually take a history class he was awesome and uh and so if that kind of stuff fails and the in the u.s really wanted uh to overthrow uh dictators or whatever that's when they would send in the jackals they would call them and the jackals were the people who would like cia tactics like putting flyers uh helping aid uprisings and overthrowing dictators and then installing friendly dictators or, or rulers or whatever uh oh, what was that one in south america the big canal was it not the Suez Canal, the was it the Panama Canal? Yeah. Yeah, the Panama uh, one. I think the contract originally was going to, it was either China or Russia, and the U.S. found that unacceptable, and then they overthrew it. Oh, yeah. Hell no. Yeah, and they... Dr. Hemisphere controlling the trade routes? No yeah. way. And so the U.S. Uh, made moves over there. That might have been the Kermit Roosevelt one. It might have been Iran or that one. This has been like 15 years since I've read this stuff. So it was one or the other, but he was involved in one. The hope is, uh, a hope is that with uh, greater self-sufficiency of uh, the economy, that there isn't as much of a need to uh, dominate other countries. Yeah. 
So if, uh, if you're able to finance the green revolution and switch over to renewables, then you can get your energy and uh, make your own fertilizer and have enough food without having to uh, force someone else into, you know, friendly relations with you by force. Yeah. You see what Sri Lanka? Yeah. You see the latest over there? I'm trying not to go into war. We're, we're bordering there, <laughs> trying to mix it up. Because we talk about war so much. But Sri Lanka, they, uh, over, they, they stormed the president's uh, manor, the household. And there was like all these like random people in his house, in his living room, in his swimming pool. Like, was it thousands or something? It was crazy. Yeah, I think I made a tweet uh, response to something about that on my Musings by Marco Twitter handle. And uh, it was uh, along the lines of, yeah, uh, Sri Lanka is basically the first in a chain of many more to come being the weakest link because they've been horribly managed for many years. So they were already weak to this uh, food and energy um, hmm. uh, shortage that's coming. So they were, they couldn't pay for their food and their energy, and they had high inflation. And their government uh, fell, and expect uh, expect more to fall in the coming year, and yeah. uh, maybe two years as uh, progressively healthier governments and countries and economies suffer the same fate hmm. which which ones are you thinking are coming next going down the the crapper <clears throat> um i don't know but uh exactly but and uh without a specific like order and time china's gonna run into some problems hmm. um and um I mean, China's kind of the worst, um, but anything, any uh, government that's basically like Sri Lanka, where there's just uh, uh, overwhelming amount of corruption, where they're like just doing ridiculous, stupid things, and they're just mm -hmm. not prepared. And basically, any country who is a net importer of food versus an exporter, they're more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have their own... Um, source of oil or are good for renewable energy so that's a good amount of countries yeah it's about whatever happened with south africa they were having those like almost race wars going on down there it's been quiet i haven't heard anything lately they had mass rioting happening like uh last year i think like it was all over the news people were like rioting and looting shopping malls over there and then uh, I saw, like, I think it might have been a Vice documentary where it was showing that there was these uh, white suburban, like, areas, and they, they were, like, having these big meetings preparing for this race war that was uh, expected to happen. And the, the rhetoric on uh, the black side, like, versus them was actually real harsh, talking about elimination and stuff. And so but hopefully things are calm, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. crazy stuff. I haven't heard it, but uh, if that's still going on, I expect that to boil up again when uh, things get bad. They'll just turn the other side into a scapegoat. Mm. Yeah. It'll become convenient for them to uh, take out their frustrations on the other. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I got, we, I got a bunch belongs. of cool Julius Caesar stuff I could jump into. I wanted to jump into that. So I've tapped... I've dabbled with <laughs> it's like one of those guys who is just like larger than life. The reason why you got Caesar's palace in Vegas and everybody knows Caesar's uh, name nowadays. It's like, cause he was legitimately, legitimately an exceptional human being. Like if you look at what the Russian czars, that's actually a, a variation of the word Caesar, the Russian czar, and also the Kaiser, which was uh, in Germany. I think there were some other uh, countries that had some Kaisers as well. That's also a variation of Caesar. So like it's super, super uh, influential. So when he grew up, it was at a time when Rome was having a lot of like civil war. They had a slave rebellion. They had all this crazy stuff happening. And uh, he grew up watching, like, people being killed, like, all these, you know, high-ranking high people in Rome being killed and stuff. And so the, the same way that the biker gang started up after World War II because they couldn't fit in with society anymore after going through all that kind of stuff, they had this 
uh, rebellious like class similar to almost like a hippie re revolution in Rome and Julius Caesar was one of the ringleaders of it so he's a, like this badass rebel and uh, he was the guy wearing his bag like his clothing his toga like loose with baggy <laughs> baggy toga with uh, loose belts and uh, yeah the, so, uh, like gang bankers with like their pants <laughs> hanging down around their knees <laughs> well yeah pretty much and, and then like so these like older stoic even though i got a stoic pendant on right now like cato and uh like these older stoic guys they were like hating on this younger generation the same way you hear the the older generations now trashing on generation z and the millennials and all that stuff so it's like there's a lot of parallels well, they can trash on us but we don't actually uh I mean, we don't have the all the wealth to back up that trashing. I mean, if we were just as wealthy as the boomer generation, and we, you know, didn't work as uh, have to work as hard for it, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. But actually, if you, I just saw this today on metrics, uh, the millennial uh, and same age range compared to boomers, the same age range, uh, uh, like basically a third as much um that uh wealth to our names a third as much in um, real estate wealth yeah, geez. and uh um influence you know just way less influence there were three categories i think net wealth was actually worse than it was like less than a fourth mm. <laughs> compared to the the boomer. so we are uh we're way way less to our name and uh that all went uh if it's not with us it's with someone else because that's how it's uh the economy works it doesn't just disappear so that means that it's in the hands of uh someone else so who is that in the hands of it's just a smaller uh concentrated group of individuals like you know our ceos get like 350 yep. times the average worker instead of 30 times now yeah so Speaking that's of that, that's what money is now instead <laughs> so kind of a, uh, yeah it sucks so aggravating the, yeah like the the wage gap was also in rome and it was really really bad and so i forget what the guy's name was but he was a reformer that was trying to cap the amount of money that any rich person can have it was something i like i think it was like 20 something times the worth of the uh, average person or something like that and uh he got assassinated of course <laughs> you don't mess with rich people's money <clears throat> all right yep. so Fire desperate people to kill you yeah uh, and they'll take that money to, even though if they would have waited a bit to let the policies come into effect you know you probably be better off than just to then they're gonna probably find you and execute you anyways so you won't be able to spend that money yep uh all right basically we had that we had a, like a at one point the u.s had a 90 percent marginal tax rate for the highest tax bracket which basically does that if you have a 90% tax rate uh, during the, uh, this I think this is following the New Deal days, uh, give or take oh, a little wow. bit, from um, Roosevelt. I didn't know that. They, uh, we had a 90% marginal tax rate, and that was, that. you know what? That's when the boomers were uh, in the their mm. 20s, 40s. So that's why, probably a big part of why they got a bigger share of the money, because uh, yeah. the... <laughs> All the the concentration wasn't allowed because it was axed away, and then that was then taken by the government and then reinvested into programs for the bo hmm. boomer generation. Yeah, but uh, population. Yeah. So uh, that uh, worked out well, but that's gone now. So. <laughs> so here here's the next Julius Caesar part. So at, at 25 years old, he was trying to go to Rhodes to study uh, philosophy and some other stuff. Uh, which is, I believe, that Greek island of Rhodes, isn't it? R-H-O-D-E-S. And uh, so these pirates kidnapped him, and then uh, Julius Caesar was like acting like he was in charge of the boat still, uh, according to this legend. I don't know how much... <laughs> I don't believe... I don't know how much I believe it, but based on some other stuff, I think it's plausible. To maybe they were... Uh, there was a... Maybe they are treating him well because if they knew that he was a, a well-known person, he was, like, from a wealthy family, and they were going to hold him for hostage, like, ransom thing, they probably, you know... Possibly. Could have treated him well, and they could have had free reign of the boat because it's not like he's going to uh, escape. This is such a great story. Go. 
Well, that's what they were. That's what their plan was to get ransom money. And so uh, Julius Caesar was trying to read them poetry, and then they didn't like it, so he was calling them dull barbarians to their faces. And then he was he was saying, uh, "I'm going to have you all crucified. I'm going to kill you all." Basically, <laughs> even though he's like, he, according to the legend, I don't know how much I believe. He's lucky that they didn't pull a Jamie Lannister on him. Yeah, <laughs> and, true. <laughs> You think your daddy? Well, I always break up your daddy's name when you're safe. The yeah, death, the death chop movie. off his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they were the ransom was uh, the the pirates were looking for uh, twenty talents, talents of silver. I guess it's a weight of uh, measure of silver. And the Julius Caesar was insulted that uh, oh, it was either twenty or twenty five, and he was insulted. They were looking for so low, and then so Julius Caesar demanded that they double the ransom money, and so they more than doubled the ransom money to fifty just to make Julius Caesar happy. And then, uh, so eventually he got let go, and then he got his whole crew together, got ships, and uh, they went and hunted down these pirates. These pirates were on shore, like camped out on shore somewhere, probably with some uh, campfires and eating. Julius Caesar and his crew kidnapped them uh, and crucified them all. He delivered on his promise. But he was a, a generous guy. His debts. <laughs> well, but the thing is, he didn't, because crucifixion is like one of the worst ways to die. So he had them actually killed before crucifying them as a, a merciful oh, gesture. How merciful. Did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you know, I saw recently, uh, just for to switch it over to recent yeah. events for a second, as uh, uh, things are going pretty good in uh, Ukraine, I guess, for the Ukrainians. Uh, they're uh, being more successful murdering Russians and uh, destroying their stockpiles because uh, those new HIMAR weapons are uh, Pretty good. Uh, basically without um, response from the Russian side. We got we gave them these uh, ultra long range rockets called HIMARS. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they bought us the Russians bought a system, I think, from India, which they sold it as it's able to uh, counteract these HIMARS and shoot down these rockets. But apparently it doesn't work so uh then so actually now ukraine has a range range advantage and they're able to uh destroy fuel and ammo uh depots uh, so. i just saw the most recent news today is iran is supposedly giving the russians armed uavs like drone yeah. uavs and so that's meant to counteract the, the those weapons more and so it's like this chest yeah, match and yeah, everyone's going to start like, who's supplied which side? Everyone's going to throw their hand in the ring and have it be like a proxy war. Yeah, I mean, everything is escalating slowly, but we've seen this in history, too. Everything was escalating slowly and getting a little bit worse and a little bit worse in World War II. Like, oh, you hit our city, you Nazis, and uh, the English had uh, London hit because they had to bomb at night, and then they upped the stakes and started bombing uh, Germany. It's like, it's always this little titter-tat, and the next thing you know, we're like borderline at nuclear warfare. And so... Uh Let's hope history doesn't repeat itself in this case, then. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Uh, we, try, we try not to do too much war. <laughs> we try not to do too much war stuff. Uh, oh, what was that one part? Oh, so uh, Julius Caesar's wife at, at one point, Julius Caesar got elected. I think he must have been in his uh, 30s or something like that. And uh, he got elected to Pontificus Maximus, which is like the highest religious uh, position in uh, Italy, Rome. And uh, as a result, the now. <laughs> there was this uh, religious ceremony that was for women only. You're going to like this story <laughs> for women only. And uh, this one like rich kid, the son of like one of the richest, like most successful families in Roman history for generation after generation. This guy dresses like a woman. And starts going inside this party that, and they take it very seriously when they found they discovered this guy inside this party, and they're like, "What the hell are you doing here?" Like he was dressed like a woman, trying to act like a woman, and using like a high pitched voice, and he was searching for Julius Caesar's wife for some reason in this party, and uh, there was nobody said that they were cheating uh, or she was cheating uh, against Julius Caesar with him. But uh, it was confusing, and then because it's all the bad publicity, Julius Caesar would have just been a lesbian at that point. <laughs> well, he uh, divorced his wife, and the famous line is, "The wife of Caesar, 
must be beyond suspicion. And so he divorces his wife just because this other rich guy was sneaking into an all-female religious ceremony. And so he's like a very, a very interesting guy. Or uh, sounds like kind of a dick. Julius Caesar. Yeah, he so was. Far. He's uh, <laughs> sounds like his uh, privileged like rich boy who uh, well, he, like he. Everything I'm telling you about, the first thing was that Pirates one in, in his 20s. Uh, he came from like a middle upper class family. He wasn't one of the elite families. And so he had to claw his way up. And so one thing, uh, he saw a statue of uh, Alexander the Great. I believe it was in Alexandria, Egypt. And he was said to have wept by the statue of Alexander the Great. Because he was already, right. I, I believe, older than him, and he was so miserable that he did not accomplish like world domination like uh, Alexander the Great had done. And uh, at that I, same moment, by the way, what happened? Same thing happened to me. I saw that statue, and I was like, you know, overcome oh. with it. And I wanted, I was like, you know, I have, you know, world domination uh, <laughs> yeah, ambitions. <laughs> Well, yeah, Julius Caesar, he was known for being super fast. Like, no matter what he was doing, he was always able to, like, multitask like crazy. When it, when it came to warfare or moving troops, he was, like, Mr. Lightning Fast. And he would use... Maybe he had uh, ADHD like me. Maybe. I'm not diagnosed yet. Uh, he has... Uh, he did have a seizure disorder, though, that he tried hiding from as many people as possible. And most people don't know that. And also, he... Uh, also was balding and the reason why he's always depicted wearing that that wreath i think they call it the laurel wreath like the green wreath on his head because it's like this uh thing that's uh roman hairline yeah he was covering it up it was symbolic that that wreath thing is a uh, symbolic of victory in sports music and poetry and uh, i would imagine in warfare as well and so he would always just wear that wreath and so he was like the leader of this cool, young, rebellious generation, and he was a little bit older than them, and everybody f uh, followed in his footsteps. And so, yeah, he's just such a fascinating figure, and we haven't even talked about the war stuff. He go He's one of the best generals of all time, because think about this. Most of the time, these generals are whooping the crap out of lesser armies, but Julius Caesar had to fight against some of the equals. Superior equals, forces. Yeah. Equals. That was Roman, yeah, Roman yeah. legionaries versus Roman legionaries. And he still found a way to make it make it happen. And I think it was like at least three or four battles, I think it was, against Roman uh, legionaries against another Roman general, another consul. And so that's why he's such a fascinating character. But even during those civil wars with him, whenever he would capture the opposing troops who were also Romans, he would try his best to kill them with kindness and clemency. And so he would... Uh, release them and then eventually Julius Caesar's troops were so sick of fighting these guys over and over again who were just going to go back and fight them again and each time they're risking their lives so the troops started disobeying Julius Caesar and started killing these Roman troops who they knew were going to be total rebels and fighting against them to the death anyway so you got anything yeah. else you want to say back for you, but... oh, well I saw this cool um I guess Rage and Machine did a concert, first one in 11 oh, years, I heard July 9th. They uh, uh, had some uh, uh, things to say against uh, the abortion uh, oh, yeah. decisions. Yeah, something about, oh, F the Supreme yeah, Court yeah. or something like that, or abort. Oh, yeah, they said abort the Supreme Court. They had yeah, big cool. letters on the stage. Yeah, it was. Uh, I guess it's like a holographic uh, text came up. First is uh, forced. Uh, wait is uh forced birth in a country that is the only wealthy country in the world without any guaranteed paid parental leave at the national level they put uh and they put forced birth in a country where black birth givers experience the maternal mortality two to three times higher than that of white birth givers interesting statistics here uh forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death among children and teenagers hmm and i think there's one more that was all on the screen yeah and then it ended with abort the supreme court <laughs> and then a hologram of tupac and biggie come on up no. <laughs> 
<clears throat> oh, let me uh, tell you about this Julius Caesar moment. So there was a civil war when Julius Caesar was a real young guy. And uh, this guy named Sulla took over the city and he was killing everybody, every possible opponent of him. He was having them killed when he took over the city. So the, the city was so safe for him, he could walk around without a bodyguard afterwards. Just walking, strolling down the street, and nobody, all of his enemies were dead. That's how thorough he was in killing everybody. And Julius Caesar was on his kill list. And the reason why, there was a bunch of them, I believe, but Julius Caesar was married to uh, a woman who was, I believe it was relatives to Sulla's arch enemies. And so... <laughs> basically Sulla's like oh you have to divorce this woman or you're going to be killed and Julius Caesar's like no I'm not going to divorce her <laughs> I mean this guy has no influence no power no nothing he's just like oh kill me then I'm not divorcing her <laughs> I mean that that just shows the balls and like how exceptional Julius Caesar was at that time and then uh Sulla had all a bunch of friends and Julius Caesar had a bunch of friends and uh influential people who argued to spare his life but he said in that man is a thousand of the arch enemy that the, the guy who was the other general who he was overthrowing and having this civil war with so he said there's a thousand of him a thousand of him if you we let him live there's a thousand of this enemy and julian he was damn right he was the guy julius caesar's the guy who broke the republic so that's what's really awesome about caesar like he was just this ballsy yeah. like i don't give a crap kind of character <laughs> you must be getting a lot of sun you look uh yeah like man i walk every day is that what uh you're out every day getting sun well i walk every day because it loosens up my back and i'm always most of the time listening to hardcore history when i'm walking learning about history and yeah i definitely have a, a kind of lot default setting color tan color <laughs> wait what the oh. default setting What's that? You're underneath yeah, your... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's about where you don't get the uh, tan. Even. I try to stay even. <laughs> yeah. Or I guess your hand color. You never get tan on your hands versus that. <laughs> oh. I'm mostly... Uh, well, it's pretty hot out here, so... Uh, walking in the sun is it uh, more walking in the evening if I'm going to do any walking. Yeah, so you don't before. get burned too much, yeah. Yeah, I try to stay out of the sun too much, but I uh, I do um, swim laps uh, twice a week. Um, nice. So that's most of the sun I get. Um, I make sure I put on sunscreen though, because <laughs> I would get burned otherwise. Yeah, for sure. Especially see, I played so much basketball in the sun when I was like in grade school that uh, my all my arms, even in winter, my arms have like a natural darkness to them. It's like my body uh, automatically shifted or something to have darker skin to resist the, the sun and key areas. I don't know, maybe it's a bad thing, but I've always had darker arms for, for that reason. Oh, and the last thing about Julius Caesar, well, there was one more I could do, but the last thing, the craziest one is Julius Caesar he was known as like the biggest man whore around and he would just be banging all the wives of like all the top uh other politicians in rome at one point julius caesar ran all of rome with this guy named pompey and this guy named crassus and julius caesar was banging both of their wives as he was doing that and he was having sex with all sorts of other top uh girls as well so he was like basically the ultimate uh rebel man whore clemency uh, uh guy but the problem is when time, but no wonder he got stabbed <laughs> yeah because you know that's what's uh i'm conflicted because i like julius caesar a lot but uh you know he was not really a stoic the guy who was the, the prime opposition to julius caesar was a stoic followed stoicism and uh, rather than allow after the war was about to be over rather than allow uh, julius caesar to pardon him and him to live in shame under caesar this guy uh stabbed himself in the stomach his name is Cato the Younger. And uh, then his assistants ran in, like, and they uh, healed him up, like, stitched him up and stuff. And then uh, they took his sword away from him because they knew he was suicidal. And so he quietly ripped the stitches out and started using his nails just to make himself bleed to death, ripping out his stomach and all that kind of stuff. That's the famous ending of this stoic guy. And uh, so, yeah, it's like the Julius uh, Caesar was the ultimate. Uh, great poster child for stoicism. 
Well, no, like, a lot, they see, they, were, they didn't look at suicide as bad. They looked at it as honorable in, in certain situations back then. This was before mm-hmm. Christianity took over, and before suicide was like a big sin. And so suicides were more common than you would think back then, and it was actually looked at a lot more honorably than mm-hmm. we look at it today as like the coward's way out and you're going to hell and all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love history so crazy yeah because we're crazy <laughs> i like to study the madness that way i don't feel so so crazy <laughs> but uh yeah let me see was there anything else i was gonna put no that's pretty much it oh the, the very last thing is uh the reason why i don't like julius caesar and i can't say i'm a huge fan is well because of the roman political pressures he had to wage this war in gaul which was like modern day france where like the population of the world was way lower back then but uh he actually uh killed or enslaved like somewhere in the millions of gallic people like real messed up uh situation but he kind of mm-hmm. had because they had Cato waiting for him and all these people. Uh, the second he was going to be basically turned into like modern day Spain, didn't it? Uh, it was mostly France, but the surrounding oh, areas oh. too. Yeah, France. yeah, like Belgium and like uh, some of the other areas. I forget if Spain was included or not, but uh, yeah, so he. He definitely wrecked that place. But the reason why he kind of had to is because the Roman system was like, at the second you're no longer an official, uh, a public official or a consul, which is always the two top president jobs. The second you're a, a regular citizen, you get crazy amounts of lawsuits that come at you. And his life was probably just about to be over. And they had so many enemies. Anytime anybody would uh, rise to the top, everybody was looking to tear them down or to deny them more power. It was like very cutthroat, and that was a flaw in the system, which is why Julius Caesar had to extend this war and look for excuses to continue fighting this war, and he was able to get it extended for many years. And because then, that allowed them to stay in power longer. Yeah, they allowed the extensions to happen, and oh, okay. uh, and so like at first at first it looked justified it's like oh no our allies over here are getting attacked by these animals over here we have to do something and then it became more like a video game prompt yeah <laughs> pretty much civilization game it's like our allies are getting attacked <laughs> tell them yeah and so he had like it, at first he was justified but then it became more of finding excuses and it just really he turned into a he became and did really horrible things, killing women and children and all that kind of stuff. That's so I, why it's not a good idea to give anyone too much power, especially yeah. when close to losing it. Yeah, so that's the reason. That, uh, with Trump recently, that went pretty bad. What was January the showing? Ah, uh, did you watch it all? Uh, not all of it. I don't or, have time for that. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, forever. Yeah, I've caught some pretty interesting snippets, and uh, that's uh, you can't have a functioning democracy with uh, that kind of behavior going on. If you let that slide, yeah, then we don't have anything really worth. I'm I'm not sure exactly which parts, but I don't like. He should have been able to have uh, cross examination of the witnesses and everything like a real court case instead of. But they made it a show trial where he couldn't even defend himself, and you only hear one side of the story and. Only certain snippets from the uh, where they had the lawyers. What's that called again? The, where they had the lawyers with the cameras. Uh, uh, I forget the word off the top of my head. Ah. Uh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. though. It's like the word that I've heard a million times. I just, I'm drawing a blank right now. The yeah. Well, we're not lawyers, thank God. So yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a little more tailored to uh, have a story, but uh, uh, and yet, even if it was cross-examined, uh, you can't uh, you can't make that big of a a change in in the facts on you know of the ground on the ground. So deposition, I'm sure that it would. Yeah, deposition. deposition yeah, that's it. it. Can't be me. Yeah, I'm sure that would because uh, there's this uh, you know. Uh, uh, context everything can help you empathize with just about anyone i mean you have people who will empathize with hitler 
uh, look at it from his perspective and all that as well. Oh, and, you know what? I, it's, it's, oh, my God. I watched this documentary. It was on uh, the Torrent site. It was a World War II documentary. I didn't even know what I got, but it was like a Nazi sympathizer uh, documentary, and they tried to make it look all reasonable at first, but then I get to this point where it was showing the the concentration camps, and then he, they, they were saying, oh, yeah, the Jews, they were given the, the houses and the beds because otherwise they'd be out there in the open. They were doing them a favor. They were trying to spin it like they were doing the Jews a favor and the Polish people a favor and the concentration. I was like, all right, this is a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> But this is a, a documentary that, if you look at the torrent websites, like it's actually pretty popular and it's being spread. And if, if you don't know history, like people are gonna fall for that crap. That's scary, especially with young people, yeah. where they're, over, they're more um, easily uh, manipulated and whatever they they're like sponges and they don't have critical thinking until later. Yeah, and uh, kind of, yeah, you see. Uh, it's like in what was this uh, country not too long ago? They just they just uh, I forget which country it is, but they just uh, elected this dictator who was like a, from a family of dictators, and the, his parents were like the worst uh, dictators of this country's history, and everyone hated them. But then there was enough time had passed where it was the younger generation were the main voters, and um, they did a really good social media campaign on like you know, Facebook and whatever the kids are using and uh, ended up winning. And uh, wasn't Sri Lanka, uh, was it? No, uh, it's not. It's uh, someone who's probably going to turn into Sri Lanka soon, but uh, hmm. Sri Lanka. Hmm. But I think hmm. it's possibly South America. Uh, it was in the news. Uh, Hmm. Not that long ago, this guy, his family went into exile, and they were really famous in like, uh, was it the '90s, where their family was like with all the world leaders, and they were you know photograph all our famous people, and they'd have these lavish parties, and they were like some of the richest, you know, people in the world, the president's families, and they had to one of the poorest countries in the world, and they were just basically were just. Oh. Uh, was it maybe Ethi? Ethiopia, maybe? or no, no. What was the oh, one? What was the one that was in America? Oh, sure. Haiti. Was it maybe Haiti? Haiti was in absolute hell, and the president got killed. And remember, they got that was like the they had the triple catastrophes happening at the same time. Their president gets assassinated. They got hit with that horrible earthquake over there, and there was like another. Th there was another third one that was like all at the same time. I've never heard of a place it's getting so of, screwed. Bunch of there's not just one. They've had multiple tsunamis in our lifetime. Yeah. All right. I mean, like two or three. The, the, uh, was it tsunamis or just earthquakes? I know they've had multiple earthquakes. Well, they're uh, they're an island, aren't they? Yeah. They're small it's islands. Like not so that I far from here. Earthquake. They're probably going to get hit with a tsunami too. Yeah, I forget. Uh, yeah, how most is decimated. The earthquakes were very devastating, though. That I remember seeing the footage. It wasn't so much about the tsunami they hit. It was like building, because with their low building standards, and they were building them up. Yeah. Housing. I'm not sure when they're just like shacks with like two pieces of tin, like laid against yeah. each other. Yeah, it's crazy. Whenever, see, that's what's cool. Like Dan Carlin, who makes the Hardcore History uh, podcast, he says there's two different kinds of personalities. There's the kind that could look back in history and study all the most horrible crap that there is, because then you can say, hey, where I'm at right now in life, that's not so bad. <laughs> you know, like, this is actually pretty yeah. good. Uh, we're in good shape right now when you compare it to the histor history. But then there's the other people who study history, and then as soon as they hear something horrific, they, it just hits them to the core, and they feel miserable, and they can't, like, function or something. I don't know. I, I'm definitely the Dan Carlin type where I could hear all this crazy crap, and then it just makes the context of life better and makes yeah. it better. I think I'm in that category more. It's a gives a little perspective. Mm -hmm. Although you can have uh, times where things roll back and things do can get worse. They don't always just get better over time. So yeah, well, yeah. Some like people I... like are have been lulled into the fact that oh yeah, even though we have our bad times, things are constantly getting better over time. And even the poorest people are way better off now than they were hundreds of years ago. You know, yeah. even when inequality is bad, standard of living still 
is pretty decent even in like you know yeah developed that's, that's true but for the most part you know, it's true yeah, for the most part but then you can have a period that where it rolls back like uh you're probably gonna see that in a lot of countries uh next year yeah like f for most of like even our grandparents and others like after the great depression like it's pretty much been mostly upwards except for like you didn't even need to have a college education in what was it the 60s and then you could support a one man supporting his entire family in a big house a dog many kids supporting his wife have plenty of savings in the bank no college education necessary but now it's like there it is more of a struggle financially for everybody these days and even for the past over 10 15 years it's been like that at least hmm. yeah housing especially that was uh it's they used to uh, i don't know it was just so cheap and easy to get to. like we were expanding and there was people even like built houses from kits which doesn't really happen anymore <laughs> what but you, well, they'll order a kit from a catalog like sears used to have a house that you could order mm -hmm. and they're like ship all the materials to your lot and it was like put together in a way it was almost like an ikea type situation mm -hmm. where you could put together your own house jeez that's it depends on, uh, depend on how it's engineered. Uh, you can have a really good house that doesn't even have like many nails in it. Like I saw this uh, <laughs> Japanese house where, I mean, the craftsmanship they must have put into this thing to make it fit so exactly was unbelievable and probably wasn't efficient use of time. But they were uh, in this video. They're dismantling a building that was basically a series of interlocking, you know, wooden shapes, and then they just had like a little wedge that was like hammered into a, the side of the wood to lock hmm. it into place. Nice. And there was no nails, and uh, they were able to construct this gigantic building. Uh, well, well, you know, three D printing on the how three D printed houses are existing now, and those are pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't uh, want to see that take off. I mean, I saw an example of a place uh, here in Arizona that nice. uh, they made, and I don't know, it seemed like more of a maybe, a, you know, to get attention, publicity type of thing, because hmm. uh, if it's so efficient and cheap, why aren't they doing this everywhere? Uh, yeah. It was printed out a house out of, like, you know, concrete, basically, out of a, uh, out of a big, you know, overhead grid system hmm sounds it i wonder what if the materials like are like rubber i wonder if it's like the benefits of rubber because some people have rubber walls they put in like makeshift houses they use tires and then they insulate the tires because i guess the tires uh make things a lot cooler in the summer and they insulate and make things warmer in the winter it's pretty uh, amazing yeah Talk about like eco houses where they like are built up against a big mound of like earth and with rubber or they're made out of yeah. Uh, yeah they can be made out of tires and covered with earth yeah and then, like hobbit houses uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i've seen those those are pretty cool i would like that one i saw a house that also was actually um dug into the ground and all of the house was below ground uh and then the open part was like a ramp that went down to it and the open part was like a central courtyard kind of like a japanese style house Ooh. so you can have a nice kind of garden area in the middle and be outdoor and because it was sunk and because of the eye line your neighbors couldn't see into your into there at all so nice. you could have uh if you wanted you can have all open windows in the sides so you can always see in the middle i'm sure you have shades you can pull if you want to but then um yeah and then uh and it stays really cool because you have earth on top of you insulating you that's awesome uh, yeah, I was like, oh man, I would love that. You know, you have privacy and you get an outdoor space that's really private, even in like a crowded suburban area. <laughs> that's great. And you get like better energy efficiency. Uh, I know it must be expensive. It depends on the soil because like Arizona soil is pretty hard. Oh, so yeah. that's uh, why there's I no basements. I heard, dig, yeah. I heard about that's that. Right. I, I was researching it one day uh, where, like, in the southern states, the, the density of the soil is so much, like, harder and thicker, and it's harder to – it's way more oh, expensive, yeah. way more expensive moisture. to make a basement, so nobody has basements. Yeah, it's probably because the moisture has been sucked out of it over time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not like a shovel can go through it. Think about, like, you know, like up north. And it's a lot of work, though. I've done it. I was, uh, I did a job with my uncle one day, uh, 
we were uh some guy had their water pipe main burst and it was uh leaking underground um in their front yard <laughs> they had no water oh, so man. they were in a rush and they knew my uncle so he uh, uh brought me on for help and we did this rush job where uh even though there was a storm going on and it was like a rare monsoon it was monsoon season so it was uh, and it was very very cold so it was like uh, this heavy rain and cold coming down on us <laughs> as we were struggling with shovels. We didn't have any equipment. Like, uh, it would have been nice if we had a fucking, you know, like a little cap or whatever that you could just yeah. sit in, you know, glass over you. And yeah. that would have, we probably could have done that and still came up ahead. But there were there was shovels. And I remember we had like, uh, you know, one of those hand torches, the butane torches. And, you know, it has oh, a yeah. little... We were, uh, I was uh, holding that up to my wet gloved hands directly to the flame to warm them up. <laughs> and it didn't burn my hand because my hand was totally soaked. Jeez. So I would warm up my hands with the torch in between, like digging. <laughs> Interesting. It was like terrible, like slave labor <laughs> type yeah. situations. But uh, yeah, because we, we had an exploratory dig cut a bit. We had an idea where it was, but not exactly. <laughs> so you have to do exploratory digging, and the ground was very hard. You need a metal detector. And, uh, that might have helped. Yeah, we didn't have that either. <laughs> um, but if it's PVC pipes, then it won't help. Oh, I don't yeah. know what the material was. Um, and then, yeah, when we got into it, then we had to, uh, you know, cut out a part and solder it out in the rain and all that stuff. And uh, luckily, we got paid pretty good. My uncle never charged what he should have. I, since I was there and I was so fucking annoying, I, I, I looked up some info and I was like, OK, this is what you're charging them. Like, so we actually got paid a decent amount where I felt reasonable about doing that. And uh <laughs> Not only were they happy to pay us what uh, he thought was like, this is ridiculous, they'll never pay this. And I said, trust me, they'll pay it. Not only did they pay it, but they brought us uh, one of those like plates of brownies out to us. And Jeez. the next day, to thank us because it was like, I'm sure they saw us out of their front windows where they were nice and cozy inside while we were suffering <laughs> in the front yard doing Sipping that. Sipping tea, drinking some whiskey or whatever they're doing. Yeah. So you feel extra good as you're, you know, watching someone else suffer. Getting a foot massage. <laughs> yeah, they could have. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. My uncle, he did so many things wrong, but uh, he uh, he never became a licensed contractor, which uh, hmm. he could have got a lot more work and a lot more, you know, Steady. money if he'd done that because he's uh, it always worked as a handyman. But under the I table, guess technically, well. Probably, yeah. I don't think he ever put any of taxes. <laughs> no, he's like never showed any income at all. <laughs> Not for a long time. Uh, um, but if he had, uh, he had the skills, but uh, yeah. it's not that hard, you know. It's like I looked it up. I could become one. It wouldn't take that much. Uh, some online classes and stuff. I'm Over $1,000 in the state of Arizona because I'm taking a real estate course. Um, you're supposed to be a licensed contractor to do any work over a grand um, is kind of the rule. Uh, but if you're not, then uh, then you don't have to be, you're not technically, they have to be licensed. But if you are, then you're supposed to have a two year warranty on stuff. Hmm. Um, so uh, there's like a licensing board. So there's a little accountability there. A lot of those boards, you know, who knows if they ever, they probably don't do anything unless there's overwhelming evidence where there's no choice, but the, you know, censure someone. Otherwise I'm sure people get uh, away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. But uh, I do want to bring it up cause there's one, I'm a, I'm the president of my HOA, which I hate and I hate HOAs. You're the but, president? Yeah, I figured if I was on the HOA board, at least uh, I would know what's going on, so I wouldn't How get screwed. How many members are there? I was just three. There's uh, only three the, members total? Most companies, is just a president, a treasurer, and a secretary is what you need to form a, a board of oh. for any, any company. You said homeowners but, association, though, right? It's technically yeah. a company then? Hmm. Well, I'm just saying that's kind of the standard for like oh. any company. As those three roles so uh so it has those and we have a professional property manager who uh gets paid and also has contacts with contractors but as a result she uh leans towards protecting her contractors whenever there's a dispute 
uh, she'll, uh, you know, shield them. And uh, cause she has business relationships with them for many other clients, even though she's technically supposed to serve as a fiduciary, which means a less interest. And she is a broker as well. So you could go to the broker license side, but anyway, this contractor did some work on some lights for us that are older. And it's uh, another stupid situation that pisses me off because these lights are perfectly fine, but they have plastic globes on them that developed holes from the sun damage over time. Hmm. And because they have holes in them, water got in and that rusted out the fixtures. And then, so they're having problems. But uh, and now it's expensive. But if you just replace the globes, which is like a five dollar freaking thing, then they would have been fine for another 10 years. And a lot of them will be. But anyways, this guy was paid a good amount of money to fix a couple light posts. And uh, one of them failed right after. And uh, their official line is, hey, uh, it's um, that's it. I can't fix it. Sorry. No yeah. refund. You know, wow. and um, so if he's a licensed contractor, you're supposed to have a warranty um and um yeah we're gonna get shafted i'm gonna uh follow up on that Jeez. actually I, I went out and i took a look at it and i highly doubt he did anything to it because the amount of spider webs around it <laughs> seemed like no one had touched it in months so <laughs> i bet he didn't even fucking touch that thing that's funny you, you could just <laughs> they get away with so much shit dude especially yeah, like especially uh, H20 knows. Yeah. i would There's not know anything time. Like, yeah, they might be, you have these types that are like busybodies about other people's personal shit and they want to get into everyone else's personal lives and that interests them. Gossip queen. But the actual important stuff that it, uh, costs you money and is, uh, they don't give understand anything. That's too complicated. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know what the fuck's going on there. So a lot of these places get kind of like uh, taken advantage of because they get the money coming in every month and it's like it they can't sit in the account forever so they spend it and you know you get overcharged left and right a little bit here a little bit there and you know, the contractors can make a good living off of having these hoa clients you know yeah interesting yeah i, I never oh, delved into yeah. that too i much. hate hoas i can't wait to get I out hate of here. all those little crappy regulations yeah. like you can't park too many cars in a driveway or you well, can't it's all about I hate all that. It's crap. all about like all these things that things you could do with your own property or can't. Yeah, you can't so, have it visually look like this or that. Like it's so stupid. What, yeah. Oh, isn't there rules like you can't leave your Christmas tree up in the window like after a certain time or something like that? They can. Yeah, there's. Uh, they can have all kinds of things like that. Basically, my uh, back porch is what's known as like limited common property something like that where it's like my property but not totally so it's like visible to other people so it's like uh they have a say in what's done on there so you, you know, can't put like mannequin heads on spikes and like all this stuff <laughs> You know, I, I should do that just to piss people off, but uh, I probably could do that. But, like, I wanted to uh, close it off to make it private, but that was a big deal where uh, they didn't want me to do that. Hmm. Uh, so I just treated it like that. It's not even mine. I don't <laughs> even really enjoy it at all. Yeah. yeah. I would have an actual backyard with a block fence where no one can see. I'll actually enjoy outside a bit. I know we don't have a homeowners association, but they have all these rules like you can't build a house too close to a lake over here. Like uh, ours is grandfathered in, so we're all right. But and then also you're not allowed to build like a garage across the street without a permit and paying all this money. You gotta go, or all sorts of little crappy rules. Like it's so annoying. Or even storage. Like a, a friend of ours had a boat on. Uh, this empty vacant lot that's bothering nobody and it's like looks like it's a part of his property but it's technically technically not so then this uh village worker or whatever was just going around snooping around complaining and like writing tickets and threatening tickets and all this crap you know it's just you, why you got to get harassed to live I, like it reminds me of that meme it's uh Oh, yeah, it's a, a, a human looking at the monkey and saying, ah, you primitive, stupid monkey or something like that. And then the monkey fires back, you're the only species on this planet that pays money to live. And then the, it shows the human crying afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, interesting thing with, uh, I don't know if it's the same with Arizona, but I've been learning about property rights a little bit. 
And if you live on a body of water and it's not a commercial waterway, then your property uh, lines kind of extend into the water and meet in the middle. And uh, so it might be that your property is kind of, you own the water out a certain distance, huh. kind of like a slice of a pie going into the middle of the lake with your neighbors. Oh, that'd be cool. I mean... like, if you wanted to have like maybe like a, a stationary dock or something, maybe you could because it's like your property. Because some people do that, right? You have like a little thing out uh, off the shore a little bit, you know, like a dock thing that's like sitting there, like not mm -hmm. connected to the land. Don't some oh, people yeah, have like, those? Like little kitty, like play fort, like gym things that are yeah. anchored to the, that's like what you see. And not like wooden, like floating islands or anything like that. Yeah, but I guess technically you do. So like if like, I don't know, oil was discovered underneath the, the, the lake bed, <laughs> you know, maybe you would own part of it. <laughs> Start that's dressing like, it's uh you know that's a thing too I'll start dressing like a texan with one of those little skinny ties things and like shooting a pistol in the air getting oil rich <laughs> really nice, huh? like the guy from the wow. simpsons or the the beverly hillbillies <laughs> i forget that one i didn't watch that too much me neither but that was the original one mm. where they there were a bunch of hillbillies and they discovered oil on their property and they all moved to Beverly Hills, and that was basically the premise of the oh, show. Okay. And I never knew that. <laughs> I've always just heard of it, and it seemed like it was always like never interesting to me, so I shut it off. I did watch every I Love Lucy episode ever made, though, I think, except for if there was banned ones they didn't play on TV when I was a kid. But this is the only ones. Just cause... Yeah, I remember uh, two always stick out to me. The, uh, the one where she made wine, and she had to stop in that, uh, that thing, you know? like uh, a traditional Italian winemaking where you're like... Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Crush the grapes. And uh, I think one. she got an argument with another woman where, like, they were baited into a contest, like, who was doing it better. Like, she was doing it, enjoying. Yeah. And, like, another woman was doing it, and then she started to do it faster, and the other woman do it faster. And after a little while, they were, like, shoving each other. <laughs> and then they got in a full-on fight where they were, like, they're, like, shoving each other's faces into the into the pool of, like, grapes. <laughs> Like a yeah, mud, like I remember that, like a mud wrestling match, you know. Did you see the t-shirts and everything? Yeah, the chocolate one's probably the most famous one with yeah. the conveyor belt with the chocolate. Yeah, but, I but, guess uh, they're, yeah she's the checker, and it starts going faster. And she just starts shoving them into her mouth yeah. and like. <laughs> yeah, pretty good stuff. But uh, there was the town where she grew up. Or, or she was born at least. It grew up there, I think. And they tried to like honor her with a statue in the town. And uh, the statue looks so horrible. It looked like nothing like her. Like the townspeople rebelled against it and were like petitioning to have it taken down. I, I don't know if they ever got a good one up or not, but the, the one they put up was such a joke. It was like an embarrassment. It was like horrible. I, I, I should put that in this uh, podcast here right at the end. If I could find a good picture that I could use, I'll insert it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you see it and you're part of that project and it comes out that bad, like... You know, for you to go ahead with it, I mean, what's your thought process? Like, well, we already paid the money for this. Might as well put it up even though it looks like shit. <laughs> or or maybe it's like, well, this was my cousin that we paid to do this. We know he sucked, but, you know, it was a favor <laughs> to me. So, <laughs> And he doesn't want to hurt the other guy's yeah. feelings. He's like, oh, it was great the whole time. <laughs> or it's like, he's one of, like a big donor to them. It's like He said, I'm an artist. I could do it. And they're like, oh, yeah, go ahead. That would be a funny comedy skit uh, plot, actually, for uh, a plot like where you're unveiling a statue and the artist is like really bad, but you don't want to hurt his feelings, so you just keep going along with it. Then there's this massive unveiling where they rip the the covers off of it or whatever, and then the, everybody reacts in horror. <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen that many times in different shows. Some version yeah. of that. Yeah, I've seen stuff like that. I forget what what shows, but yeah, it's getting late over here. It's already about 1 a.m. So. Better, better start wrapping it up but uh well i figure i want to give a shout out to my friends at the uh, titan nft of course join us take a look at the screen i'm going to put in some cool uh, nfts uh join us at in the comment there's going to be a link join us on discord you can hang out with us i'm always in there posting up some funny stuff or whatever too and hanging out and uh so yeah check out the artwork i jumped in there one time but uh i 
I don't know. I didn't hear. I thought I jumped on the music one. I thought you said it played music in there, but it does. I didn't yeah. Hear. There's you could join. What we do is you join the music channel, and then you go back to the general chat, and the music channel continues, and then you're able to chill with us, jam, listen to some music, relax, show cool gifts. Uh, I, I joined it, but I didn't hear any music, so I don't it know. Might have it been, was, um, is, uh, you have to have like one of the uh, DJs in there in order for the music to start, I believe. If you're not a DJ, it didn't start when you entered. But uh, yeah, you have if you to manually move over the DJ bot somehow. Well, the DJ problems, it, it was glitching it out uh, when regular people were as DJs, and so it was glitching it out, and then problems were happening, so they made it restricted. So now just one of uh, the admins, I think, or maybe some others have to be in there. But yeah, uh, also for you guys, you don't even have to buy the NFTs. Just come in, hang out with us, and. Uh, this is not a paid advertisement, by the way. It's just cool people or we hang out. And, uh, yeah, there's raffles where you could win, like, Amazon gift cards or other I know, NFTs. I've joined, like, ten of them at this point. I haven't won one. So. I, I was the first guy to get the NFT, so I won more than anybody. But I've been on a drought myself. I haven't won anything lately. But uh, the more people, the bigger the prizes are going to be. They're going to give away Air Jordans. They gave away Disneyland uh, tickets already. They, I won a Pokemon uh, gift set thing. Uh, it was like worth like 50 or 70 bucks or something like that. So, yeah, uh, hit us up. Enjoy. You know, it's fun to just hang out. It's a cool community. And uh, what else? Yep. The comedy project's coming along nice. And... I guess I'll just end it here. Uh, remember, you shall die. Memento mori. I got my pendant as usual. You know, as a good, as a positive way. You know, seize the day. The time's ticking. You can't get it back. Always seize the day. Just like what I'm doing with this comedy project right now. 110%. So, I hope everybody uh, is, is as excited as I am for this project. So, all right. Uh, Memento mori. Peace out, guys. You Say whatever you want to say. Uh, I don't know. I, th I think uh, you said it pretty good. Um, just uh, nice talking as uh, as usual, you and too. Uh, hope uh, someone enjoys uh, listening. And um, yeah, take care of yourself and uh, have a good night. Check out his channel too, Musings by Marco, on YouTube. I'll have that in the description as well and also yeah subscribe there's going to be a time when i probably make a, a lot of videos on this channel but it's all dependent on the comedy project that's the first uh, first and foremost thing i'm doing i'm going to be editing it for months it's going to be a lot of work but if it doesn't work out for whatever reason i'm going to fall back and make a crap ton of videos on this channel so hit subscribe and uh, if you're interested for the future. Otherwise, these podcasts are always going to come out. So subscribe. Uh, all right. Have a good night, guys, or day, whatever it is for you. Later.